This video is about how to set up and analyze Punnett squares. Punnett squares are simply a tool that you can use in genetics to help you determine the probability or likelihood that certain parents, the combination of certain parents, will produce offspring with specific genotypes and phenotypes. So this is a predictive tool. Now it depends on right, who your parents are, their genotypes, and this is what the tool looks like once you've set it up and completed it. We're about to walk through the steps of how you would do that. Punnett squares are set up based on Gregor Mendel's law of segregation. He came up with this as he was doing his pea plant um, experiments. And the law of segregation states that during gamete production, which is meiosis, gametes again are sperm and egg, your sex cells, so during the production of gametes, the two copies of a gene that parents and every person has will separate so that each gamete will receive one copy. So if you have a person who is homozygous dominant for a trait, one of each of those will go into each of their gametes. All right, same if you're a heterozygote, you're gonna have your dominant allele go into one set of gametes and the recessive allele go into the other. If you are homozygous recessive, all of your eggs or sperm will have the recessive allele. Next, we're gonna look up how to set up a Punnett square. Now, the example gene and trait that we're going to follow as we go through the, these examples is the gene for, that's called TYR. This gene codes for the production of the protein tyrosinase, which is important in the production of melanin, which makes um, the color pigment, it is the color pigment, in your hair and eyes and skin. So the alleles for that, there's the dominant allele that produces a functioning tyrosinase protein and when it works it builds melanin and then you have pigmented skin. The other allele for that is recessive and this is a mutated gene that results in a non-functioning tyrosinase protein in which case um, your skin hair and eyes cannot make melanin and therefore you don't have pigmented skin. So in this example we first have to set up that tool. Now it depends on who our parents are. So in our example, our female has a homozygous dominant genotype based on law of segregation. One of those copies will go out down into each one of her eggs. All right, and we're gonna put those egg possibilities. We put those along the, next to the rows of the Punnett square. And then the male, in this case, he's homozygous recessive, so this male would actually be albino because he is homozygous recessive for the albinism allele. But his sperm options, they go on top of each column. So that's how you're going to set it up. Now that we have the parents figured out and our Punnett square set up, we can fill it in to determine the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring. Now, I have a simple way to remember how to work Punnett squares, and I like to think of it as the Punnett square dance, which has two, two steps. Drop it like it's hot and slide to the right. So this is my little guy dropping it, and this one sliding it to the right. So, this has to do, again, with how we fill in our Punnett square. So if this is it, I'm going to drop the alleles from the father down into the box. Right, every box below. Right, I'm dropping this one. And then that's the sperm and then the egg, it's going to meet the egg. So I'm going to slide each of these egg alleles, these alleles in the egg to the right, sliding to the right. Okay, 
So I've finished filling in my Punnett square that shows the cross between my homozygous dominant mother and my homozygous recessive father. Now we've got to figure out what does all of this mean? The next step is to analyze the results, right? The whole point of a Punnett square is to, is to be a tool to help us determine the genotypes and phenotypes of offspring. So this is what we just built. Our genotypes, again, are the gene combinations. So we need to figure out how many of our four have the heterozygous genotype. So they have one dominant and one recessive. Another word for this is called a carrier. So if I look at my Punnett square, I can see that all four, four out of four, have the heterozygous genotype, which means 100%, another way to write that is by percentage, and 100% of them show the heterozygote genotype. So how does that uh, translate into phenotype? Well, since pigmented skin is dominant over non-pigmented skin, even though each single one of these individuals carries the albinism gene, the pigmented skin gene dominates over it. So actually, 100% of our offspring will have pigmented skin, and 0% will have the phenotype of albinism. Now, let's work another example. What if I cross two heterozygotes? This one's a little more complicated. And what I'd like you to do, actually, is to stop the video right now, push pause, and I want you to do your best using the Punnett Square Dance Method to complete the Punnett square and then count the number um, of boxes that have each genotype and then translate that into percentages okay and do the same for phenotype figure out how many and what percent will have pigmented skin and how many and what percent will be albino so I pause that now and then replay and we'll check and see if you're right Okay, hopefully you've pressed play now, and we're going to fill this in ourselves and figure out what happened. All right, so I'm going to drop it like it's hot. And drop this one down the column, and then I'm going to slide these to the right. dominant allele in both of those. I'm going to slide this to the right so that I have a recessive allele in each of those. So now that it's completed, how many out of four of these are homozygous dominant? Well, one out of four is, which makes 25%. How many are heterozygous carriers? One, two, so I have two out of four, which is 50%. And then, um, how many are homozygous recessive? There's just one here, which is another 25%. Okay, now we have three different genotypes. However, because the allele for pigmented skin is dominant over the one for non-pigmented skin, our phenotypes, the ratios for those, are going to be different than the genotypes. So let's take a look. Both those with homozygous dominant genotype and heterozygous genotype are going to have pigmented skin. So, one, two, three out of four of our offspring will have pigmented skin, or likely to have pigmented skin and that equals 75%. Okay, on the other hand, only one out of four are homozygous recessive, 
and have the, we'll show the albinism phenotype. So that's 25%. These are just a couple of examples of what happens when you cross different, or parents of different genotypes and have different offsprings. You can use this tool on all sorts of crosses to figure out the likelihood of different genotypes and phenotypes from across.